Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. In my hand is the Synology RT2600 AC and this device has been in market for several years now and it's a great device, great build quality, great hardware specs, feature rich, great device. But this device has always lacked one major capability and that's VLAN support. But now with an updated version of SRM version 1.3, this device has been given a new chance in life, maybe a few years too late for some people, but now this device can do VLANs. Now, there are a few caveats, and I am going to talk about them towards the end of the video. Bottom line is that now this device can do VLANs, and so it can work with other managed switches. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this video. We are going to create VLANs on the router, and then we are going to configure a managed switch with the same VLANs and see how they work seamlessly together. So without any further ado, let's go over to the computer and start configuring stuff. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and this is a small diagram of what we will be trying to achieve today. We will create several VLANs on our Synology router. We are going to create a trunk port to carry all of these VLANs to a managed switch. And in the managed, managed switch, we are going to configure individual ports to individual VLANs. And we are going to test that every, every time we, we connect a device to a certain port, we'll get an IP address from a, a different VLAN. Now, we are dealing with VLANs, which is relatively a more complex topic in the networking world. So I will try to explain it in, in, in a few words, but if you're not familiar with the concept, I, I strongly recommend that you use YouTube or other online resources uh, to, familiarize with your, uh, to familiarize yourself with the concept. Basically, VLANs are a way for us to logically create networks and carry them over a single Ethernet cable, whereas without VLANs, if we want to carry separate networks from one place to another, we would have to deploy several Ethernet cables, each for every network, whereas VLANs allow us to create tags over packets of data over a single Ethernet cable, and by utilizing these tags, we can split the cable to several networks and this is really the magic behind VLANs. Now, there is a lot more to it. There are tagged VLANs, untagged VLANs, routed VLANs, unrouted VLANs. I think that this brief explanation is not really enough. I strongly recommend to go ahead and use YouTube for your advantage here. So this is what we are going to try to do today. Now, this is my Synology router, my uh, RT. 2600 AC. It, it's just been updated to SRM 1.3. I factory reset it. I changed the local network from 182.168.1.1 to 10.101.1 because I am double netted behind my uh, regular network. So that's the only thing I've done. I also I've also taken a managed switch I had lying around in my storage, it's a very old one, I'm not going to even spend a minute explaining the interface on it, and every switch has a different interface, so we are going to uh, deal with the concept and not with the actual uh, uh, click here, click that. Alright, so we are at the SRM 1.3 desktop, and we launch Network Center. By the way, the changes, the graphical changes from 1.2 to 1.3 are almost non-existent, so if you're familiar or if you're already familiar with SRM 1.2, you will be familiar with SRM 1.3. All right, to create our VLANs, we'll head over to local network. And as you can see, I already have uh, the default primary network and we already have the default guest network. The default primary network, I've changed the subnet of it. That's the only thing I did. And by the way, a, a, a caveat that you need to be aware of, you cannot change the VLAN tag of the primary network and you cannot change 
the trunk order of the ports of the uh, Synology uh, router. For example, you cannot create a VLAN and have this VLAN to be the untagged VLAN and all the other ports, uh, all the other VLANs will be tagged. I'll explain a little bit later. Let's jump right in and create our first VLAN. Let's click on create right here. The VLAN name will be, for example, IoT. And I'm going to give it a VLAN tag of 10. I'm going to change the subnet to 1.100.10.1. That's great. I'm not going to allow managing Synology router through this network, meaning that if users on this network will open a browser and type 10.100.10.1, they will not be able to reach in the, in the management interface of the Synology router. But I am going to uncheck enable network isolation because usually in IoT networks, devices need to be able to talk with each other, whereas if we will enable network isolation, they will not be able to do it. Let's click on next. Sorry, I'm not going to select any of the checkboxes right here. And this is another caveat. If I change the port, for example, if I assign it to port four, port four will stop being a, 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 a trunk port and it will only be assigned to this specific a, a, a VLAN. It might work for you if, you if you're not using a managed switch and you just need a, a physical port on the Synology router to be tagged to this network. That's the way to do it. In my case, this is not what I want to achieve. Click on next. You can create a Wi-Fi SSID for this network. For example, if I'll type in SRM IoT and give it a password, I will have a Wi-Fi network with this name and it will be uh, tagged or connect the clients that connect to this Wi-Fi network will get an IP address from the IoT VLAN. Click on next and apply. Great, now I'm going to do the exact same process to create my uh, internal clients VLAN. Click on create, give it a name of clients 10.100.20.1 VLAN tag 20. I do want to allow uh, devices to reach the Synology web interface. That's just for this specific example. Again, I'm not going to enable network isolation. Click on next. I'm not going to assign any ports to this net to this network. Again, I, I want to continue using every one of my uh, ports on my Synology router as a trunk port. Whereas if I will uh, uh, check this checkbox, the port will be only an access point. Uh, sorry, only an access port only to this network. Not something that I want to achieve on this video. Click on next. Let's give it an, uh, the Wi-Fi network. By the way, you don't have to create a Wi-Fi network. In this case, just for this example, I am going to do it. SRM clients and the password. Click on next, apply. That's great. And I am going to create one more VLAN, for example, for our, uh, I don't know, servers network. VLAN tag 30, allow managing the, the router through this network and I don't want to enable network isolation. I don't want to create a Wi-Fi network for our servers. I, I'm going, I'm presented with a warning that there is no Wi-Fi network for this network. That's exactly what I'm aiming for. Click apply. All right, great. So we have all our VLANs created. By the way, a caveat that you need to be aware of. For, for a certain reason, I don't know why Synology have decided to give us 99 cents and not a dollar. If we will try to create more than five networks, we will get a warning that we've reached the maximum limit of uh, VLANs or networks. I don't know why they did it. If I click on create right now, it will warn me that I can only create up to five networks. Again, it's a Synology limitation. I'm not sure why it's there, but it's there. It's a caveat. You need to be aware of it. For most people, 
especially in home networks or small office networks, five networks is more than enough. But you should be aware that this limitation is here. So right now we've created all our VLANs. Another topic that is probably too big to be included in this video is firewall. Right now, we didn't create any firewall rules to manage the traffic between VLANs, meaning, meaning that right now every VLAN can talk or communicate with every other VLAN. I will create a separate video on how to manage firewall rules in Synology to manage the traffic or to block certain traffic between certain VLANs. Just be aware of it that right now no firewall rules exist. Every VLAN can talk to every VLAN. All right, we've created our VLANs. At this point, we will try to take our managed switch, create the same VLAN tags on it, and let's see if we we'll, uh, can assign certain ports to certain VLANs. All right, this is my managed switch. It's very old. You will probably not be uh, encountering it. I'm not going to walk over uh, the interface for it. So what I'll do right now is just create the VLANs. All right, so we have our VLANs uh, objects created on our switch, on our switch, sorry. And now let's try to take certain individual ports and assign them to a certain individual VLAN. And we'll do it by going to port to VLAN. All right, let's, let's choose a port for VLAN 10 which will be our, our IoT. Let's take port 6 and make it the untagged VLAN for this port, meaning that this will be the native VLAN for this port. Click on apply. For 20, we'll select port 7 untagged. And for 30, We'll select port 8 and make it the untagged VLAN. I'll just do a quick commit of, this, of these changes. All right, let's review our settings. Port 6 is a trunk port with a native uh, VLAN ID of 10. Port 7, trunk port with a native VLAN of 20. And 8, port 8 is, native, is a trunk port with native VLAN of 20. 30. By the way, I could have easily made these ports uh, access ports with just these uh, VLANs uh, on them. It's just a matter of configuring every, every switch is different. I'm just, for simplicity's sake, I've chosen to do it this way. This time, uh, this is the time to test our configuration. I'm going to co connect my computer to port 8. I expect my computer to receive an IP address, a DHCP uh, IP address from the 10.100.30 subnet. All right, guys, I'm cutting the recording because there's something I forgot to do, which led me to fail to receive an IP address. I forgot to configure my trunk port from my Synology router to the switch, which, which, is, port, uh, which is port one on the switch. I need to configure all the other VLANs as uh, untagged or tagged uh, 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 VLANs on the port. So for port for VLAN 1 on port 1. We have it untagged, which is great. We also need to assign it as a member, our untagged member on VLAN 10 and also on VLAN 20. We need to add it as a member of tagged type because without this step, the port that connects the switch to the Synology firewall or router doesn't even have a clue about the VLAN tags. And now we'll save our changes. And now where the real trunk port from the Synology router to the switch are, is familiar with all the, all the VLAN tags, now I'm going to disconnect my computer again. All right, let's try to do an IP config. release and IP config renew and we should receive a, 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 an IP address from the 30 network. Great, great. That's our IP address, the 30.112. 
Great, this means that our trunk port is, uh, is configured correctly. Now I'm going to uh, do another test. I'm going to connect my computer from port 8 to port 7. All right, let's do an IP config release. And now an IP config renew, and we should receive an IP address from the dot 20 subnet. And that's great, that's exactly what we're getting. This means that the VLANs that we've created on our Synology router have uh, trunk through their trunk ports to the, Synolo to the uh, Cisco switch. And from the Cisco switch, once uh, uh, the Cisco switch has been familiarized with the VLAN tags, we have uh, successfully assigned individual ports to in individual VLANs. And now we've uh, successfully tagged our ports to a, a certain VLAN. That means that we've achieved our goal for today. I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope this, been, uh, this has been informative for you. Please join our Synology Facebook group, join our Unify Facebook group if you're at it, and I will see you all on our next video. Bye everyone!